Abhay, what after Mad Jack? What are you doing with Recycle? <laughs> so after Mad Jack, the, uh, I was looking for the next big opportunity. This was two kids, one failed, the first Malamal which failed, then I started Mad Jack. So I thought the next big opportunity looks like is in recycling or waste management and I think that's where we started working. So after December 2016, after leaving Capillary, January we started this. Last two, first two years was learning about the space because we have never worked in the industry earlier. Learned about it. I think we have got some formula to what business can we build. The idea was to build a scalable business and a profit which can make some money. We don't want to build a business which is like more on a CSR funds or an NGO driven no. business. The idea was to, it should, a unit economic level, it should be profitable. So after working the, in the industry for two years, I think we have understood the, it a little bit and now we have created a formula. I think recycle to me looks like a pretty large opportunity. From the waste management perspective, I feel that it's going to be a large industry for many entrepreneurs to disrupt. One recycle cannot do it. It's, it's pretty large in this country itself. I think I feel that there will be two to three unicorns in the waste management space who will have a digital intervention, who will bring in digital intervention in the whole journey of uh, waste from generator to the recycler or wherever it goes. Uh, two to three minimum in next 10 years. Uh, where we'll be there or not, we don't know, but we are just seeing that industry has opportunity. Yeah. And I think that's that looks like uh, my third child and let's hope for the, for, uh, for the best for the recycle team. Yeah, yeah. And also tell us about the, you know, the how you are bringing the brands and the recyclers because it's a very fragmented space. Right? Yeah, it's a completely informal, completely disconnected industry. So, uh, so if I just in two minutes, so they are generators, who are the stakeholders? They are generators like us, consumers and businesses, these are the two generators. Producers, producer produce it, give it to the us, we consume it and then we throw it somewhere and it goes to the informal sector. That's a today's process. Yeah. And then there is an end recycler who needs this material to, to produce something more out of that and continue the circular economy process. Today, because the we as a consumer and businesses, we are not responsibly disposing it, it, it goes mostly into the landfill and ocean and so creating a huge environment problem uh, here. So what we are trying to do that we have bought in this digital platform, like a recycle platform, which has a consumer interface, which has a business interface, where we have given the apps or the uh, internet interfaces to the people where they can log in, sell the material or dispose, dispose the material responsibly, trace the material, where it is going, whether it is going to the right place, whether it is getting recycled, what happened with that material. So that whole journey of the West is being traced in our platform. Mm -hmm through consumers, recyclers and generators. There is, and we are working with the informal sector also. We have even bought in the rat pickers, lot of kabadiwalas who are using our app, selling the material, because we are trying to remove a couple of stakeholders which are unnecessary in the system. Yeah. The real guys who are working on ground are there. We are not disrupting them. We want them to be there. So we don't want to kill their business. In fact, we are giving them 15, 20% extra incentive because the middlemen are removed out of this. Yeah. So I think this using digital platform is in technology intervention we are able to connect we are trying to connect so you are like a marketplace right yeah we uh, absolutely it is a mar marketplace and which is connecting all these guys uh, like you can say it's a uber for west or uber yeah. for trash where we are connecting all, we, are, we don't do recycling there are recyclers we don't have our own logistics we are partnered with people who do the logistics so what we provide is technology and logistics and basically ease of uh, as a as you know as someone who wants recycling done you are giving me the opportunity to get it done quickly and if I'm a recyclist then you're giving me the waste. opportunity to buy the yeah. that material yeah. and then we handle we help them in connecting with yeah, each yeah. other yeah. so that's that's the basic idea we have. that's brilliant and uh, you were talking about something that the government has also done recently which makes it easier right for the industry yeah yeah so what has happened uh, till last year uh, the producers like the companies who produce we are not responsible for the waste management. They didn't have any responsibility. Just produce it, sell it to the consumer. So what government has done last year is that they have come up with a regulation called EPR, Extended Producers Responsibility, which was not there earlier. It has been a global, it is there, in the, all the developed countries it is implemented, but India was behind. So this EPR has started last March in electronic category, like all the electronic manufacturer like Samsung, Sony, everyone comes under it now. So government has made them responsible to get back this material and make it recycled. So they don't have to buy it, but they have to make put the efforts that, that suppose Samsung sells 100 ton of uh, e-waste this year, 
they have to, after end of life they have to get 30% or 50% of that back based on the slot given by the government same thing is coming in plastic already has come in the plastic also plastic was also not there so plastic for example itc has 100000 metric ton plastic is a packaging they have disposed they are responsible now to get that material back so all together plastic and e waste there are 10000 brands which are suddenly under this waste management uh, industry and expected to be spending 7 billion dollars this year which is going to increase 20 percent year on year because their targets are increasing this year government has given them target of just 20 percent next year is going to be 50 percent year after 70 yeah. percent last year they will say jitna bhi bech rahe yeah. so i think this is going to grow and this additional money which has come in the industry now is funding the uh, generators to really get incentivized and us also to create that ecosystem in place great i hope you Recycle and the spelling is R E C Y K A L goes on to become unicorn, Dedacon, because of the impact also. Right? Yeah, like, the, yeah. So I said the aim is. I'm not sure whether it will become a unicorn or not, but I think the biggest beauty of this business is that it has a lot of social impact. Yes. So, and our idea was that if we could create say uh, 100,000 metric tons every year, uh, if we go through our system, we are going to really save that material going from landfill or the ocean and I think that is which is yes. our environmental impact and naturally it is going to affect every one of us. So the idea was that, uh, although that is a byproduct, but that is a very important aspect. Great, yeah, hope you have your hat trick or something, no? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, thank you, thanks for that. Thanks. Let's hope for the best. Thanks so much. Yeah, thanks. Thanks.